All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why you suck at street photography. And don't get me wrong, this is not a personal attack saying that I'm the best at street photography and you suck. It's basically how I got better at street photography over the years and 10 things that you could do to improve quickly at it. All right, so reason number one, you simply come unprepared. And what I mean by that is that you arrive at the location, you don't know where you would like to go, you don't know the weather, you don't know the light condition, you don't know anything about the location. I think that street photography starts even before you are in the field, right? There are simple ways to fix that. First, you might want to check Google Street View to have a little preview of where you're gonna walk, what are the interesting spots and what you might encounter uh, on your journey there. Second, I think for the weather, well, that's pretty much straightforward. Just check your weather app and make sure that the weather condition that you are going to encounter there fit what you're trying to capture. And another application that I personally like to use also when I go to a location that I don't necessarily know is photo peels because it allows me to basically preview the light condition at a certain time or simply put to make sure that I understand when is going to be the golden hour time or the blue hour time, etc. And just by checking a little bit more into what are going to be the conditions where I go, I get to get the best of the location. The second point, you keep your camera in your bag. And I'm not saying that you're going to location and you only take your camera out when you see a good shot. All I'm saying is that sometimes when you're going to that location, I think that you should always keep the camera in your hand ready to shoot. Because a lot of the times where I try to go to a location to shoot, I manage to capture really good shots on my way there and on my way back. And let me know in the comment if this ever happened to you, but for me, plenty of time, I had some great shots that I didn't plan for. Reason number three is that you don't have a plan. There is more to street photography than just the conditions. There is also what you want to accomplish, what you want to work on, what kind of color or situations you're trying to capture. Having a clear plan in your mind would definitely help you achieve those results. I think there is a saying that goes like, if you don't plan, you basically plan to fail. And I think that's also true for, for street photography. It doesn't have to be two details, but let's say that on one day uh, I go to Shinjuku and I want to focus on contrast or I want to focus on another particular composition. Just having this in the back of my mind will help me to choose my location, to choose where I sh want to stop and to choose what kind of shot I want to capture. Reason number four, you don't take enough time. So of course I know that a lot of us don't have much time during the day or during the weekends to shoot, right? But when you go for a street session, you should at least take an hour or two, if you can, to dedicate to that particular session. If you're trying to do street photography and you want to allocate like 10 minutes on it, chances are that you will not have time to actually capture proper pictures because stars don't align for you every time you're in the street, right? You sometimes have to wait for a long time to be able to capture something worthy as to put out there, right? Something that actually looks like a proper picture. And if you don't have the time to wait for it, you might have some quick snapshots here and there, but that's pretty much it. Uh, you have to find the right place, find the right uh, subjects, and this just takes time. So make sure that you dedicate enough time for every single session. Reason number five, you're trying to cover too many areas. A lot of times I talk to people or I go shoot with people and they just want to go from one area to another to another and they only have like one hour, right? And this kind of joined my previous point. Don't try to cover too many areas of a city, right? You have more chances capturing better pictures if you focus on a particular area and try to, you know, give different perspective on this area, try to capture different angle, different moments, see when the light changes, when the traffic changes, when the type of people that uh, go into this area change, right? If you go around different areas all the time and you spend five minutes here, five minutes there, five minutes there, number one, you're going to spend much time on the transportation. Uh, even if you walk there, you're going to be more focused on walking somewhere and just snapping, walking, snapping, walking. And you're not going to have enough time to dedicate to one particular place and capture the best out of it. Speaking of attention, number six is that you just don't pay attention, right? 
When you're out there shooting and you have your earpods with uh, music blasting or listening to a podcast, when you're shooting with someone but you're more focused on the conversation or having fun, we, there is nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong, but it's just that it takes away attention from what you're trying to achieve, right? And if you're trying to get the best pictures possible, I think that you should focus your attention on composition, on uh, what's around you, Let's say that you are seeing a bike coming out, right? And you can figure out, okay, I think it's going to go that way. And with the, the contrast and the frame here, this picture would look really great. You can prepare yourself, right? But if you're focused on just talking to people or just uh, listening to your podcast and capture whatever is just right in front of you, it gets much harder to capture this kind of shot. And myself, I'm guilty of that, right? Oftentimes, I want to listen to music, but I know that if I'm listening to music, I just want background music that don't have any lyrics or anything so that I'm not distracted. Now, reason number seven is that you're chasing people around. Uh, don't, just don't do that. Uh, number one is creepy. And number two, it's not the way you're going to achieve the best results, right? Of course, if you're focused on a particular subject, Maybe you can ask them, okay, if they want a picture in a particular context, etc. But chasing people around is not gonna get you the results. You don't want to hunt, you want to fish. What you should do instead, in my opinion, it's basically to find a good spot where the composition or maybe the mood is interesting, right? And you're going to find that particular fish, that particular subject that is going to come through that particular composition. That way you can get your settings, your camera ready. You can focus your attention on the composition and the area where you are. And it gets much easier that way to capture relevant and beautiful pictures. All right, so if you like this video so far and you get value out of it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I release this kind of video every week. So if you don't want to miss them out, make sure to subscribe. Now, reason number eight, you don't understand your settings, right? If you don't understand how you should set your aperture to make sure that you have everything in focus, how you should set your shutter speed to make sure that you don't have any blur in your image due to movement or due to camera shake, how to set your ISO to compensate for the lack of light or because there's too much light, right? It's going to be complicated for you to get a good image. Your camera should basically be a mean to an end and not the end goal, right? I already made a video about that topic. And if you want to know more about how to adjust your settings for street photography on your Fujifilm camera, then check out this video right here. Number nine, you don't understand composition. We all know about settings. We all know about lenses. We all know about cameras, right? Because this is the easy and popular topic. But one more important, way more important, I would think, is composition. Like right now, I'm using words to make sentences, right? So you can think as composition techniques as those words. And through different composition techniques, you can express yourself and make sentences. That's basically the language of photography. And there are many, many composition techniques, right? Uh, rule of third, contrast, leading lines, uh, frames, etc. There, there are so many out there. Let me know in the comments if you want to know more about composition techniques. I can make a series of video uh, to teach you that if you want. Of course, you can produce pictures without understanding at all composition techniques. But I think that the more you understand them, the better your photography will be. All right, and my final point is that you just have too many expectations also. Most of the time when you're going to shoot street photography, the pictures that you're gonna produce are not gonna be great, and that's fine. What you see on uh, social medias, on Instagram, etc., where people post their best pictures and you compare the pictures that you capture to others' best pictures, of course, not all your shots are gonna be like that. I don't post all my shots either, right? 90% of the shots that I take during photography, my street photography sessions are meh at best, and, and that's okay, I'm fine with that. If you can take 100 pictures and out of those 100, you get one good picture, I think that's already a, a good victory, you know? You should be happy with that. Just shoot, just enjoy yourself also. And by putting less pressure on yourself, I think that's also a way to get better shots at the end. All right, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you got value out of it and that you got some tips that will help you get better. And if you want to see how I shoot in the streets of Tokyo and uh, how I apply the tips that I gave you today during my street photography sessions, then check out this video right here. See you there.